वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला दिस इज द सब्सिक्वेंट मॉड्यूल ऑफ द प्रीवियस मॉड्यूल इन विच वी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड मोबाइल आई पी टेक्नोलॉजी इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डिफरेंट फेजेज विच आर एग्जीक्यूटेड टू इम्प्लीमेंट द वर्किंग ऑफ मोबाइल आई पी टेक्नोलॉजी वील बी लर्निंग दैट हाउ अ मोबाइल नोड डिस्कवर्स दैट इट इज इन अ फॉरन नेटवर्क we'll also learn that how it discovers the foreign agent how it acquires care of address how the care of address is registered with the home agent and how tunneling and encapsulation takes place just take a quick recap at the mobile tech uh, mobile ip technology which we discussed in the previous module mobile ip technology uses two addresses for a mobile node one is the home address which is fixed and is known to all and other is the care of address which is used by the mobile node when it moves from one network to another network it changes obviously as the mobile node moves from one network to another network when uh, when any packet for the mobile node arrives which is not in its foreign network it is received by the home agent of that particular network and it forwards that packet to the current location of the mobile node as we pointed out in the last lecture also that this working is an umbrella which requires a lots of activities these activities we will be discussing in three phases discovery registration and tunneling first let us discuss what is discovery in this phase the mobile node identifies that it is in the foreign network and it searches the home agents and the foreign agents it can be done in two ways agent advertisements and agent solicitations let us look at what is meant by agent advertisements the people who have already studied networking are too familiar with this name because this is the process which the internet node use to search for the routers around using icmp router discovery protocol the inventors of mobile ip decided that the same procedure can be used to discover the home agent and the foreign agent so home agent and foreign agents periodically broadcast agent advertisements in the form of icmp messages the mobile node receives that message what does it do with that particular message what information it gets from that icmp message the first thing which it do does when it receives a icmp message is that it observes the address part of the sender now as we know that the ip address consists of two parts network portion and the host portion so what the mobile node does with the address part the address part contains the address of the agent who has advertised this message the mobile node smartly compares the network part of its own address with the network part of the address of the agent if both the network parts match the mobile node understands that it is in the home network he does not have to worry about it but if the network part do not match it understands that it is in the foreign network so he wants care of addresses now from where does he get the care of addresses the care of addresses are also broadcasted in the agent advertisements in the icmp messages the foreign agent broadcast at least one care of address if the agent advertisement is made by the home agent no care of addresses are present in the message but the home agent broadcast to inform the mobile nodes which are returning to the home network or that broadcast can also be used by the other nodes which wish to become the nodes of for which that network is the foreign network the home agent do not broadcast any care of addresses but the agent advertisements can be used by the mobile node when it is returning to the home network the care of addresses which are advertised by the foreign agent are the address of the foreign agent itself 
Many nodes can share the same care of address which reduces demand of already scarce IPv4 addresses and also IPv6 addresses looking at the sprawl of mobile computing device. It also reduces the bandwidth. How? Because if the care of address is the address of the foreign agent, it will be the end of the tunnel. It will decapsulate the packet at its level. So, when the packet is sent from the foreign agent to the mobile node, it will not be encapsulated, hence saving the bandwidth. As we said that the mobile IP inventors decided to use the ICMP messages for agent advertisements, but there are some mobility extensions provided to reflect the mobility of the agents. The extensions are type is equal to 16 to notify that it is the agent advertisement, length is equal to number of care of address provided with the message, it is equal to 6 plus 4 multiplied by number of addresses. Registration lifetime, it is the time in seconds for which the agent is negotiating with the mobile device, that is a mobile device cannot ask a registration time more than this. Sequence number is the total number of advertisements sent during initialization. The flags after the registration lifetime explains the feature of advertisements. The flag values are set according as the R bit indicates that registration with this agent is compulsory even if the mobile node uses co-located care of address. B bit B bit indicates that the foreign agent is busy to take any registrations. H bit indicates that the advertisement is broadcasted by the home agent. F bit indicates that the advertisement is broadcasted by the foreign agent. M bit and G bit indicates the nature of encapsulation. M is for minimal encapsulation and G is for generic routing encapsulation. The T bit indicates reverse tunneling. After this, the fields indicates care of addresses available with the agent advertisements. As we have already said that a foreign agent should broadcast at least one care of address which is achieved by the mobile node. It is also possible that the mobile node do not want to wait for the agent advertisements when it enters into the foreign network. So, in this situation, it can also broadcast agent solicitations based on RFC 1256 for router solicitations. These solicitations are answered by the foreign agent, but it cannot send agent solicitations infinite number of times. It will result in flooding of the network. So, at the most three solicitations are sent. If there is no reply receipt for the agent solicitation, it decreases the rate of solicitation to avoid flooding of network. Through agent advertisement and agent solicitations, the mobile node searches the foreign agent. There can be a possibility that the mobile node enters into a network in which there are no foreign agents or all the foreign agents are busy to take up any registrations. Then what will the mobile node do? The immediate rescue to this solution is DHCP. In this case, the mobile node will acquire a temporary care of address for itself using DHCP. Mobile node itself acts as its foreign agent and any packet which will be sent from the home agent will now be received by the mobile node itself. But the problem with this situation is that every time it moves from one network to another network and acquires independent care of addresses for it, it will be a threat to the scarcity of already deficient IPv4 address space. The addresses that the mobile node acquires using DHCP are also known as co-located care of addresses. Now, once the mobile node has acquired a care of address using any of the two methods which has just been described, it needs to register that care of address with its home agents. The registration process depends on whether the care of address which the mobile node has achieved is of foreign agent or it is the co-located care of address of the device itself. 
the registration process is different in both the cases. Let us look at case 1 when the care of address of the mobile node is the foreign agent care of address. In this situation, the mobile node will send the registration request to the foreign agent. The foreign agent will forward the registration request to the home agent. The home agent will accept or reject the registration request and will give the reply back not to the mobile node, but to the foreign agent. And it is the responsibility of the foreign agent to relay this reply back to the mobile node. In case the care of address achieved by the mobile node is the co-located care of address, it is acting as its own foreign agent. In this situation, the mobile node will send a registration request to the home agent. The home agent will authenticate the registration request and sends the registration reply back to the mobile node. The registration process can be successful or unsuccessful depending on the various situations. If the registration process is successful, then the home agent maintains a mobile binding at its stage. What is mobile binding? The home agent records the home address of the mobile node, the care of address of the mobile node and the registration lifetime. This is known as mobile binding. Why the registration lifetime is required? The registration lifetime is used to indicate the validity of the period for which the registration will last. It is measured in seconds. So, the mobile node should re-register itself before the registration lifetime expires when it moves to a new network. The registration lifetime cannot be greater than what was provided during the agent advertisement. Both the mobile node and the agents negotiate the registration lifetime. UDP packets are used for registration requests and reply. Let us see at the UDP header for the registration request. It contains the following fields. The type field is equal to 1 to indicate that it is a request. It is set to 3 to indicate that it is a reply. Followed by the type field, there are flag bits. After that, the lifetime field is there. The 8 flag bits are as follows. S bit is set if the mobile node wants previous mobility bindings, bindings to be retained, hence permitting simultaneous binding. B bit is sent if the mobile node wishes to receive the broadcast same as received by the home agent in the home network. D bit indicate that mobile node uses co-located care of addresses. M bit and G bit indicates the nature of encapsulation. M is for minimal encapsulation and G is for generic routing encapsulation. T indicates reverse tunneling from the foreign agent. Lifetime is equal to validity of registration in second. A 0 indicates deregistration and all the bits set to 1 indicates infinite time. The remaining fields are source address of the mobile node that is a home address. The destination address is that of a foreign agent or a home agent depending on what type of care of address the mobile node is using. Care of address is the care of address of the mobile nodes. Identification is an important parameter which is generated by mobile node to uniquely identify a request. It is matched at the time of registration reply to protect replay attacks of registrations. Registration message between the mobile node and the home agent should be authenticated to prevent any malicious node to disrupt the traffic between the mobile node and the home agent by sending bogus care of addresses or by sending fake addresses. Using 128-bit secret key and HMAC MD5 hashing algorithm, a digital signature is generated. Each mobile node and home agent shares a common secret which makes the digital signal signature unique and allows the agent to authenticate the mobile node. The registration reply is also done using the UDP packets. The following UDP header, the UDP header contains following information. 
type is equal to 3 indicates registration reply. The code contains the values which indicates that whether the registration was successful or unsuccessful and what are the reasons if it was unsuccessful. We will be showing the values of the codes which indicates the particular success or unsuccess due to the reasons. Lifetime is for how much time in seconds the registration will be valid if it was successful. Now, let us look at some different values of the codes which are returned if the registration was successful or unsuccessful. The value of code returned as 0 indicates that registration is successful. A 1 value returned indicates that registration is accepted, but simultaneous mobile bindings are not supported. The registration request can be denied by the foreign agent or by the home agent. For example, a home agent can be too busy to take any more tunnels, it have insufficient resources. In this condition, it can reject a registration. Therefore, the code returned is 130. The registration might also be uh, rejected because the mobile node has failed to authenticate itself to the home agent. In this situation, 131 code is being returned. Similarly, if the foreign agent fails authentication, code number 132 is returned. Similarly, a foreign agent can also reject the registration request. For example, code value 67 returns that says that the registration has been rejected because the mobile node fails to authenticate itself. You can just refer to the different values of code and the reasons for which the re uh, registrations are unsuccessful in the given table. The next phase, up to now the mobile node has achieved a care of address and has registered that care of address with the home agent. The next phase is tunneling and encapsulation. What is a tunnel? A tunnel means establishment of pipe and pipe is data stream between two connected ends. Data is inserted from one end and it is retrieved from the other end using first in first out method. When the mobile node uses foreign agent care of address, the endpoints of the tunnels are at the entry point, home agent is there and at the end point of the tunnel, foreign agent would be there. When the mobile node uses co-located care of address, at the entry point of the tunnel, home agent would be there and at the end point of the tunnel, the mobile node itself would be there. Tunneling is performed using encapsulation. What is encapsulation? The literal meaning of encapsulation is hiding. The same meaning is applied here. Encapsulation means putting the packet header and the data available in that packet as the data of another packet. I again repeat, encapsulation means putting a packet header and data as data of another packet. Decapsulation means removing the packet out from the data part of the packet. The new header is called the outer header or the tunnel header and the original header is called the inner header. Mobile IP uses different types of encapsulation method. One encapsulation method is IP within IP which is mandatory and the two other optional encapsulation methods are minimal encapsulation and generic routing encapsulation. IP within IP encapsulation. As the name itself indicates that putting one IP packet as the payload or the data of another IP packet. In this scheme, the home agent adds a new IP header called the tunnel header. The tunnel header uses H home agent's address as the source address and mobile nodes care of address as the tunnel destination address. The tunnel header uses 4 as the protocol number indicating that the next protocol header is again an IP header. You can see in the diagram that the inner header has been encapsulated in the outer header. 
But what is unusual uh, with this technique? You can observe that while encapsulating the inner header within the outer header, all the fields have been repeated. So, it represents a lot of redundancy. We can see that all the fields of the outer header are available in the inner header and vice versa. To solve this problem and to avoid the redundancies, minimal encapsulation was present was documented in RFC 2004. It is encapsulation, it is, op, it is an optional encapsulation. To remove the several redundant fields like TOS, minimum encapsulation is used. The changes which are made are in reflected in the inner header. The values of the field reflecting changes are protocol field is equal to 55 indicating that minimal encapsulation is used. Destination address is the IP address of the exit point of tunnel. S is also known as source address present bit. If S is equal to 1, it indicates that the information about the original sender will be included. If it is 0, it indicates that the information about the original sender will not be included. Length field is incremented by the size of forwarded packet. The increments depends on the value of s. If s is equal to 1, the length field will be incremented by 12 octets and if it is equal to 0, the length field will be incremented by 8 octets. Both IP within IP and minimal encapsulation presents the encapsulation method in which it is possible to encapsulate a packet of one protocol into the packet of the same protocol. In contrast, the generic routing encapsulation supports encapsulation of packet of one protocol into the data part of packet of another ne network protocol. In this, an additional GRE header is prepended to the original packet and then both the, these parts including the GRE header forms the data part of the new header. So, to summarize this module, we have learnt the different phases of the mobile IP technology that is discovery, registration and tunneling. We have learnt that how a mobile node discovers that it is, it is in its foreign network, how it achieves the care of addresses and registers uh, with the home agent. We had also discussed the different tunneling and encapsulation techniques. This was about mobile IP. There are still some answers, there are still some questions which are left unanswered as if how the routing mechanism are followed, how the security is provided in mobile IP and many more. These we will be discussing in the subsequent models of mobile IP. Till then, thank you.